Today's lecture will be about leader shift. To me, this is one of the best subjects and this is why I chose it for today. Leader shift shows the changes in leadership in the last few years. So the basis is of course talent management. As for us, talent and developing talent is one of the most important parts that leaders will have to do. And Corona made a huge difference in this. So we will first focus on how to develop talent and then we will focus on what did Corona change? What did it change for the companies? What did it change for the people? And especially what did it change in the styles of management and leadership? But to do this, we also must focus on the roles of management. So this is the topic of today, at least what I prepared. But we always try to comply as much as possible to the audience. So what we are going to talk about is leader shift. What changed in terms of leadership during the last days? No, not the last days almost last days, but especially the last years. So my question first to you is... My question to you would be, what especially is in your interest on this? What do you want me to take into account in whatever I say? That's a question. First of all, uh, we would like to get acquainted. Uh, we are talking a lot about leadership and uh, its roles and so on and so forth. But uh, we would like to know about new uh, trends uh, in uh, theoretical interpretation in management uh, science. Let it be. It, it will be interesting for me because I am not a good specialist in management, and it will be a good uh, time for me to uh, to listen to about the new theoretical backgrounds, how uh, leadership and, by the way, how leadership uh, is. Uh, happening nowadays. Okay, I will make sure I will go to the last part of the presentation for sure then to answer this. Any more? Maybe practical cases, how to be a leader. Well, you have enough practical cases in Ukraine at the moment, so. <laughs> <laughs> and in Russia, by the way. <laughs> how to be an effective leader, how to motivate employees to make them work. Okay. Okay. Yeah? If you have any questions somewhere, just shoot. Okay, let's start. Why doesn't it work? Because I'm not on it probably. Yeah. So, just a little bit about my background. You can see from my titles that I'm a financial and an auditor and information technology specialist, but also a mediator. But my real background is in sports. So many things I do, I feel, I see are coming from sports. And this is why we always say sports inspiration. So in my high school, I was a professional tennis player and a professional soccer player. So I decided to join the army. because I thought I could combine sports and work. So I was very lucky in the army to get promoted quite fast. So at 35, I was a colonel. And I also was in the educational sphere. I was a professor at the university. So my background in leadership comes from these three areas. But of course we did a lot of research also in many companies and especially with our company Mentally Fit. Mentally Fit. 
In Mentally Fit, we train all the biggest companies in the world, like EY, like ING Bank, like Philips, Shell, whatever. And we train them on all topics related to vitality. And what do you think is the most important aspects for vitality of people? So, what influences vitality of people most? So, vitality is your energy. How powerful do you feel? How energetic do you feel? Let me give you another question. Who believes that people who are more vital, more energetic, will perform better? Who says yes? Yeah? The rest no? Okay. It depends from the field of activity. Uh, the person could, couldn't have a lot of energy, but it, if he finds uh, uh, his own occupation, like, I don't know, some software developer who is sitting on the chair all the time with no energy and complaining. All but the this time. is a but big misunderstanding. And why? Because the brain is physical, yes? And if you're more fit, your brain will perform better. Mm -hmm. So it will be on all aspects that if you have more energy, you will perform better. So even if they do a great job, they could do even better. There is some um, theory about Pareto. I don't know how it's English, but that 20% uh, of your activity can make 80% uh, of your results is the first. And for the first question, I can give you answer. The motivation is uh, everything dep depends on motivation. What uh, motivation can bring? I mean, some salary, some. Uh, we will come back to that later for sure. So. Energetic if you can uh, earn a lot of money, and etc. If you have no goal, money doesn't matter. Okay, so we will come back to that later. Keep it in mind. Okay, so what do we do in Mentally Fit? We train all the managers of the big companies, especially on teams like leadership, change management. Why? Because that influences the motivation of people. <coughs> So, we apply everything to business. So, for us it's sports inspiration, science validation, business application. Okay. So, let's first focus on the, the levels of leadership. Because of the time, I will go through this first part a bit quicker than normal. So, we divide the levels of leadership in three for all the companies. First of all, we talk about general leadership. And general leadership is, let's say, political leadership, leadership of the country. So, 
So if we would analyze the leadership of Zelensky or Putin or Biden or whoever, because they do general leadership. And there we have two types of light leaders. We have the formal leadership, given to people by their position. So they are the president or the king or whatever. So therefore in the past it was mostly the warlords. So if you look at leaders from the past, it's people like Napoleon or Caesar or Alexander the Great. But in general leadership, we also look at the thought leaders. So people who have a great influence on others. but still <coughs> are not in the formal position. So a person like Martin Luther King had a great influence on many people. Uh, maybe even Marx. So these kind of people are gurus, examples to others. but they do not have a formal position. Very often we see that these people then later on get the formal position. So if you look in, at Gandhi in the past or Nelson Mandela, they are first the thought leaders and then become official leaders. The second level is corporate leadership. That's the CEOs of the companies. And also there we have two aspects. First of all, their role to the outside world. The external representation. So if you look at the rector of the Western Univer uh, Ukrainian University, he is of course the face to the outside world for the university. But he also has an internal role. He will be responsible for the culture in the company. which will directly influence the motivation of the people. But also, the way he does this will influence the motivation of the people. Does he make the people proud to be part of the company? If we look at these two levels, what is the same? And what is different from the last part being the personal leadership? So why do we normally draw a line here? What is different in terms of leadership? The amount of people, but it has a consequence. For personal leadership, I think that 
uh, it's not only you can show for somebody, you can show for yourself. Like, to be the king is, uh, you have to think like a king. Well, what is even more important, let me ask you a question. How many people here in this room personally know Zelensky? How many people almost every week see him personally, live? Nobody? And now to the rector. How many people will see the rector every day? Maybe in this group some of you. But if it's a quite big organization, many people will never see the CEO, at least not regularly. So how do these people do their leadership? How do you see Zelensky and why is he motivating you? It's only the few moments you see him on the television or you read about what he's doing. So you get a kind of image about the person. And this either motivates you or not. But maybe if you would know him privately he might be a completely different person. And on the terms of leadership in what he is to you, the leader of the country, he might be great. But maybe on some personal aspects, if you would know this about him, you would not like him at all. Yeah, of course, with Zelensky it's out of the question, but you understand the concept, I think. And this is the same for corporate leadership. At the, men at the military academy you get a mentor. It's a third year cadet at that moment. And my mentor is now the CEO of the biggest company in Holland. It's a company with 80,000 people. It's a very tall man, two meters high. At the military academy he was twice sportsman of the year. So very impressive. But now he's over 60. And he's not that fit anymore. And sometimes he feels like shit. He wakes up and he thinks, oh no, not today. He drags himself into the car. Of course, he has a special parking place quite close to the door. Then he steps out of the car. And he's Mr. Hero himself. And this is the way he walks through the building. Very impressive. He comes to his desk. <laughs> but only the secretary will see it. Yeah? It's the show off of the corporate leader. They only see him this very short moment. And this, of course, is very different in personal leadership. 
І це дуже відрізняється від особистого лідерства. So personal leadership means that you are in very close contact as a leader and employee. And this has an advantage and a disadvantage. So the advantage is you can influence the people much more. I can talk to Igor constantly, influencing him. But the disadvantage is that he also sees everything from me. And if I do things or show things he doesn't like, his belief in me as a leader will go down. And in the personal leaderships, we also have two aspects. Of course, the one-to-one. -one. But also as a team leader. And this, of course, is more difficult because there people also among each other will have relations, combinations, and it makes it more difficult for the leader. So if we talk about leadership, be very clear on what aspect of leadership are we talking about. And some aspects are general, but the way you have to do it, if we talk about motivation, how to bring motivation, it's different for each aspect. Yes. And for us, in all of these aspects, this is common. This is the same for each aspect. It's the concept of the four axes. So, the first one is the intelligent quotient. It's a rational capacity. How good are you in what you have to do? What competences do you have to do it? So if you talk about the potential, why is this important? If you talk about energy and vitality, why is it important? So I had some very tiresome days. We had to drive 24 hours. A lot of emotional things. Being with my son all this time, terrible. So now I feel shit, you can imagine. But fortunately, this is a topic I did before. So my competences on the topic are quite good. And it doesn't cost me much energy. Yeah, but if you would do it for the first time, of course, it's quite different. And the people here from the mediation course know how difficult it is to do it for the first time. Yes? Okay. So what is the second X? That's the PHQ. What do you think? What is PHQ? The physical quotient, okay. So what do we mean by the physical quotient? Mm, 
What is the physical quotient all about? Then at the moment when we have an opponent who is making sure that Messi don't get one ball because all the other players are no good, we will lose. So leadership is getting the best out of all the talents in the group. If you can make sure that all the people in your team are playing at that top level, then you have the best performance. So Michael Jordan was the best basketball player ever. And there's a great Netflix series about him at the moment. If you didn't see it, The Last Dance, you must see it. Then you can see what it is to have team development, team talent. Because after three years his magic was over. All the teams focused on eliminating Michael Jordan. At that moment, he changed and became a team player. He didn't make the decisive shots anymore. So he developed the whole team and not just himself. So if we talk about development, it's not just the people who can perform best and most. But if this is my team, I try to get all people here in this room at the top level of their physical performance. So, Igor, we can all see physically, not very good. <laughs> so maybe only capable of doing five hours of good work per day. So my challenge is to bring him to six or even seven. And maybe Maria will go from 20 to 21. Doesn't matter. Yeah, we try to get the best out of people. But it's surprising how little people know about the physical. So, the energetic capacity on the physical. And what is the third basics for your performance? So I was a coach in tennis and I had to make sure that the people were able to handle the racket. That they were fit enough to do it. But where do they win the match? Great. 
So why are Rafael Nadal and Djokovic the best tennis players at the moment? Because on the emotional part, they are the strongest. So the third X is the emotional quotient. So what are we talking about when we say the emotional quotient? This is the rational capacity, the competences. This is the energetic capacity. How fit are you? So what is the EQ all about? Motivation. No, not the motivation. How can we control the emotions? Manage our emotions? Close, that's for the first part, for sure, yes. But this is only the first step on it. To understand emotions of other people? That's it. It's about the social component. The social capacity. How can we relate to other people? Do we understand other people? Are we able to influence other people on this? And where does it start? Or let me rephrase, with whom does it start? Me, myself and I, yes. So the first step is always the self. And why? Because un until you understand, don't understand yourself, you will not understand others. So it's very important to understand yourself before you can go up to the next levels. But there's one more reason. And the reason is in this circle. What does this circle represent? It represents my strength on each of the axes. So the size of this circle depends my personal performance capacity. But is this also always a circle? We train all these professionals from EY, these accountants, auditors. We train technical people in technical companies, bank people, yeah. university people. How does their circle look like? What do you think? What does their circle look like? Will we exaggerate a bit? And this is normal. So if you look at training and development, how many days in your life did you spend learning on the IQ? Your whole life, primary school, secondary school, high school, university, whatever. 
And then you are hired by a company. And what do they let you do? They put you behind the desk and they let you do this. And this also shows where the problems come from nowadays with the burnouts and the stress. And why? Because when you did this for several years, so let's say you're a very good professor, Then what will be your reward? Your reward will be that you can be the manager. Or the coach or whatever, yes. But this is not IQ, this is EQ. Oh, but this is not what we are trained at. So if you look at how much training you got on the IQ, now all of a sudden you have to work on a much more difficult area and you didn't have any background, any training on it. So we always do a very simple exercise. We always say to the people, okay, if you look at a normal day for yourself, what is bringing you energy and what is costing you energy? So we have done this training tens of thousands of times in all these companies. Never ever they mention anything here. It's always about people. Sometimes here. But mostly about all these annoying students, colleagues, conflicts, whatever. And not here, of course, I understand, but in normal places. Yeah, so... When we talk about energy management, it's all about your personal performance capacity. And when we look at self, we also try to find out where are we on each of the axes. How can I enhance my performance? By making myself stronger on one of the axes. And this is also about the concept of the high pros and the high pros. So the high pros are the high potentials. High potentials will be our future leaders. Our future managers. And we train them on managerial skills. On leadership skills. So very much about EQ. The high pros are the high professionals. They are the top experts. We don't ask anything here from them. 
We want them to be excellent in research or whatever. So don't mix it up. So each of the axes is divided in four. So you can train on it. It always starts with knowledge. So in the IQ we start with the knowledge. Let's say for the first time in my life I want to learn how to drive the car. I step into the car and the instructor will tell me this is the steering wheel, these are the pedals, this is the clutch. Maybe some rules of the traffic. Knowledge. And then? Practice. Practice. Do it. The know-how. And when I did a lot of practice, I can go to my driver's exam. And if I pass, I mastered it. Are you already a good driver? When you just passed your exam? Of course, you think you are, but we experienced drivers know better. So to become an expert, you have to practice even much more. And in terms of leadership, this can be really dangerous. So we have Anastasia, and I know her in her translations, she is perfect. So now we have another lecture with all Austrians in the room. It has to be done in German, of course. So, I expect Anastasia to do the translation. But just because she's a good translator in English, does it also mean she's a good translator in German? And this often happens in companies. We have very good employees where we delegate a lot. But if we delegate a task that they are not used to, they need more instruction. They need a different form of management. Yes, so this is the IQ. On the physical Q, oh, we, let's first start with the EQ, my presentation now. So, the first step is self, and the second step is other people. So when I learned to look at myself, and we do it normally with personality analysis and these kind of tools, then I can use this knowledge also in looking at other people and helping other people. And even more difficult in groups, teams. So this is one, this is one to one, and this is one to many. Uh, 
And what is the most difficult on the EQ? What do you think? What is the most difficult? What's the next step? To make somebody drink what you want. Definitely, but this is also here. Here we also manipulate, if you call this neg positively, negatively. So manipulation is nothing negative. Yeah. Here we influence in the one-to-one, -one. here we influence to the team. But the most difficult step is change. So the most difficult thing for a leader is to handle people in a situation of change. And why is this? Because the former templates they don't work anymore and yes. you need to make something new. But this is fun, isn't it? Mm -hmm. No. Because you could use it. Because some. it's a new direction. You have to describe the items for some goal of new direction. Sure. And it's uh, but I make it very clear. You, you, you need to describe it for yourself, then to uh, influence for your people. I spent months of preparation and I give them a complete protocol, complete layout. This is how we are going to do it. Just do it. And still there's a lot of opposition. Why? It's not about instructions, it's about hope. It's about the mind of people. It's about the physical nature of people. 20 to 30 percent of the brain, uh, 20 to 30 percent of the energy is used by the brain. So we want always to save energy. If you step out of this room and you come back in, you go sit on the same place. Then you don't have to think and you don't lose energy. So therefore it's difficult to change the mind of people because that will cost them energy and they will have a natural resistance. Okay. And then we have the physical cue. So here it starts with knowledge. Here it starts with knowledge about yourself. So here also it starts with knowledge. This is about the rules of Mother Nature. And this is actually quite simple. This was based on tens of thousands, maybe even hundreds of thousands years ago. Society changed. Business changed. But the body didn't. At least not that fast. So we need to know the physiological rules. How does the body work? How does the brain work? And it's really surprising how little people know about this. So I told you at the start that I was trained as an auditor, as an accountant. But fortunately I'm also a professor. 
And when you say I'm a professor, they never ask in what field are you the professor. So three years ago, I was assigned to train all the company doctors of Shell and ING Bank in the Netherlands. On the topic of sleep and stress. So I left out my other titles. And afterwards, there was an article in the company uh, brochure about sleeping professor big success. <laughs> but can you imagine an accountant, an auditor, teaching doctors about sleep and stress? What does it mean? That means that these are topics they don't know anything about. I dare say that many of you don't know much about this topic. We think we do, but we don't. And here sports people have a huge advantage. If sports people do not live completely up to the rules of Mother Nature, you will not perform. Just one percent less and you will be one second late. So very important to know the physiological rules. And then you can train, we call it the reinforcement, make yourself stronger before you have to perform. The resistance, when you are under pressure, how can you perform at the top level? In leadership, this is a very interesting aspect. How is it possible that under stress, some people block completely, cannot perform at all? And others perform even better than normal. And the good thing is you can train this. Yeah? So, of course, especially in the military, this is very important. Yeah. Why do people run away or why do people fight at their best? And then, when we had the performance, the recovery, so we will be able to have a next performance. Okay. So these three axes are determining your capacity of performance. But what do we not know now? So let's take a guy like Igor here. Unbelievable knowledge. Never seen a guy like him. Physically, so much fitter than I am. And one of the most social, capable persons I ever met. Huge capacity. Huge possibility to perform. But the question for me, as his boss, is is he willing to bring this performance for me? So very often people have the ability to perform, but will not do it. Not all together. Social is already, already here. It used to be the spiritual X. That was the first name. 
духовна But spiritual got into something soft in the Western countries. So McKinsey started calling it the meaning quotient. And now it's called the sense quotient. Why do we do it? Why are we willing to bring all this capacity to do what we have to do? And of course, this also has four aspects. So, first of all, the identity and closely related the values. So, if I will do something which is completely against the values of Igor, Will he be willing to give his best to help me? So actually these first two aspects are more demotivators than motivators. It can be that it is very much into your values. So you like to help develop young children, young people. Then of course it helps, but mostly it will be more a demotivator than a motivator. So you must be sure not to go against the values of the people. But the real motivation, the real passion, the real ambition are the drivers. I have to find out what is really in his interests. What does he really like to do? When will he really be happy? And he, then he doesn't need extra payment. He will work in the evening. And of course, here we have all the aspects like Maslow, like all the other motivation theories. So you also have to take into account Barrett and Lievegood. Lievegood. These are very important things. So what is Maslow all about? About your personal needs, yes? What is the highest level of Maslow? Self-realization, yes? Okay, at what age do people normally go there? Some people never get there, but okay. So, and at what level, at what age are people mostly almost on the top of their career? That's mostly somewhere around 40. Yeah. And this is what Lievegood already discovered in the 60s. He was a very famous professor. He also was a psychologist. We will not blame him for it, but okay. And he found out that what he did, and that was very interesting for us, he combined the physiological curve of the person to the mental curve of the person. And the mental, emotional. So. so what he said was quite simple. He said, okay, this body is made already in the days of the Neanderthalers. So what age did Neanderthalers get mature? For the girls, 16. And for the men? 18. And why? Because this is the age they could have children. 
So nowadays this goes much more down because we have better food and better healthcare, etc. But in those days it was 16 for the girls, 18 for the men. Until that period, it's a time of deceiving. Mentally, emotionally, you receive from your parents, from your teachers. Then we have a whole period of more or less stable performance. And also emotional performance. At about 28, we are physically at our best. Then it goes down very slowly. And then for the men, at 40, we have another crisis. And this crisis means that all of a sudden, physically, we go down like this. It goes down like this, and then at over 55, we go down like this. So, for reproduction, we are not no longer interesting. So, where do we get new motivation? At 40, we are almost there at the top of the pyramid of Maslow. So after 40, we turn to other people. And all of a sudden, everybody wants to be a coach or a mediator or a manager or whatever. So this is what Barrett in the modern times made in his models. You can see that in the first part it's like Maslow, then you got to self-realization and then you go to realization of others. In the beginning related to business of course, you become a business coach or whatever. And the older you get, the more charity it will be. So if we look at this part, the drivers, the passion, ambition, we have to look at all the motivational theories, but also at the age of people like Barrett, like Leverkut, everything. But <coughs> also about what will be afterwards and what will be the next stage in the age. But one thing will always be the same, at least almost always, and it's the quest. So for the people who are more known to the topic, they might know the motivational factors of McClelland. McClelland is the iceberg theory. So the deepest level are the motivational factors. Kovi became world popular with his identity thing. How do you want to be remembered at your grave? So your quest is your ultimate desire, your ultimate goal. And anything related to this will bring you the best motivation ever. So we were training the Islam women in the center of Amsterdam. They couldn't read, they couldn't write, and they didn't speak Dutch, English or anything. 
вони не могли ні читати, ні писати, не говорили ні англійською, ні нідерландською. And for sure, the men were important, the women were completely unimportant. І звичайно, чоловіки були дуже важливими, а жінки – ні. So what was their quest when they started training them? Яка була основна ціль їхнього життя? Their quest was to prove that they are also somebody. The moment they were able to write their first sentence, they were crying. Yeah? One of them was able to open a company for herself in cooking and whatever. She was a hero. Yeah, so the quest is something deep. But for example, one of my best friends, he's one of our trainers. He is one of the most popular men in Belgium. He was number one in tennis in Belgium. Trained all the top of the world. Every day he's performing for thousands of people. Famous on television. Has a great house in the center of Antwerp. Nice family. House in Spain. Boat. Earns at least 30-40,000 per month. But if he will talk to each one of you, he will say, how is it possible? Each one of you did so great, and me, with all my capacities, I will never make it. And why? Because he never, in his youth, got appreciation of his parents. So every day we have to call him and say, oh, you did great today. If not, he's depressed and feels sad. So his quest is always getting appreciation. Okay. So what is your job as a leader, as a manager? There are two aspects. First of all, improve the circle of the people. Make them more able to perform. So make sure that the level of performance is at the maximum. But the second part is to motivate them to use it. Okay. And this is the same at each level. It's the same for Zelensky trying to motivate the Ukrainians. The rector trying to motivate the people in the university. And each person on a lower level to motivate his or her employee. Or colleague or whoever. Yeah? Concept of the four axes. Clear? Yeah. So, now let's go to the roles of management because of the time we will go over it more quickly. So, what happens in society in a large scale influences the development of managers' roles? So if we look at the development of the management roles, we started to talk about manager in what year? 
майно про менеджерів, в якому році ми почали говорити про його роль, про роль менеджера. When did we have all these courses, trainings, whatever about management? Тренінги по менеджменту, коли вони розпочалися, в яких роках? Almost correct. 1870. Why 1870? Industrial revolution. Industrial revolution. For the first time, people started working together on a large scale. Before that, it only happened in religion and in the army. So, what is important for a manager in those days? This is the year of the first MBA of Harvard. And we had great thinkers like Fayol and Taylor. And what was their background? They were the thinkers about leadership. What is their background? One of them had a plant and they produced needles. And he said that they uh, need a qualified workers, not just the people from the street. For the same man that they were teach people how to keep the show or something, something like this. So the educational background is technical engineers. Mm -hmm. Very good. So this is how we looked at leadership management in those days. So they should be able to organize, to plan, to do the logistics. And what about people? They should be productive. In those days, people were not important. There were no rights for employees. Yeah, because nobody thought about it. If you pay them, they have to do what you say, period. So they are machines. And then we got this period, 1900-1950. What happened in society? We had some world wars, we had a crisis. The whole world on fire. What did we need? We needed hope. We needed leaders to help us through these hard times. They should give us inspiration. Show us the way out. So actually not much changed since those days, yes? So we always draw a line here. Why? Because here people are not important at all. But what is a leader without people? He's alone. So what is leadership? Leadership is making people follow you. Making people realize your objectives, your goals. Okay, so after the Second World War, the whole world united. And at least in the Western world, in the 60s, 70s, we had a very interesting time. It was the time of the flower power. Sex, drugs and rock and roll. Yeah, you can laugh about it, it was my youth. 
Some of us are more sceptical. When I went to the high school in my first year in 1972, I was the only one not using drugs, not drinking, not smoking. Can you imagine that even in the schoolyard they were having sex openly? When it was warm, the women didn't wear anything on top. Everything was possible. And why? Because here, everybody united. Collectivism. And now the younger people said, oh, but I'm an individual. I also want my place. I also want to be recognized as a person. And these people came into the companies. And what is the, the answer of management on this? That's coaching. So coaching is about motivation, stimulation, individuals. So leaders give inspiration, hope to a whole group. A coach to one person or maximum a team. And then we had the end of the last century. And we had another problem, the baby boom went out. So, at this very moment, what is the biggest problem in Holland? We cannot find personnel. We are lacking at least four or five hundred thousand employees. You mean now? Now, at this very moment. But this already started here. So we do not have unemployment anymore because there are much more vacancies than unemployed people. So what do we do? We ask the people back that are already pensioned. And we ask them to be the example, the knowledge to younger people who have to be trained very fast. We asked them to train immigrants. So it's more of a trainer. So it's not a coach, it's just about knowledge. They say, okay, I did it this way, just copy it, then you will also be able to do it. And nowadays, well, actually not nowadays, we expect overall responsibility of the managers. So it got the name Bridgers. A Bridger is a multitasker. We expect them to be the manager, to be the leader, to be the coach, and to be the mentor. We expect them to organize everything perfectly. We expect them to motivate their people, both as a collective and as a person. And we expect them to be a good example in the expert. So is that possible? Almost impossible to be strong on each aspect. So why do we make this division? To see where can we train the people. So in the center, there's the role of the expert. The expert should perform. Very often, even the managers are still expert. I'm director of the university, I'm director to several companies, but also, also teaching. 
я директором університету, власником декількох компаній, але я також викладаю. Then we have the role of the leader. Потім у нас є роль лідера. The leader will inspire the people. Лідер буде надихати людей. The leader will set the strategy. Він буде встановлювати стратегію. And will try to make the people enthusiastic about the strategy. І зробить так, що люди будуть повні ентузіазму стосовно стратегії. So if people are willing to follow it, we need to organize it. Якщо люди готові йти за цим, нам треба все організувати. And to organize it, we need managers. І щоб організувати, нам потрібні менеджери. So the managers facilitate. Менеджери допомагають діяти, посилюють діяльність. They have this role of 1870, organize, logistics, planning, whatever. Вони мають цю роль, як в 1870 році, організувати, планувати логістику. So there's a big difference between the two. Є велика різниця між лідером і менеджером. Then it might be nice if people are also able to do it. Дуже добре, якщо люди теж можуть це робити. So we have to train them if necessary, develop them. Якщо потрібно, можемо їх тренувати. And then it might be nice if they actually do it. Добре, якщо вони це роблять. And for this we need the role of coach. І тоді нам треба роль коуча. To make them do it, to enable them to do it. Щоб він заставив їх це зробити. Yes, and it always has the same circle. Inspiration, organization, learning and action. Це саме коло. Надихання, організація, навчання, дія. So what we do with all our students is let them score themselves on each of the five roles. What percentage of your time do you spend on each of the five? And how good are you at it? And then of course, if we talk about development plans, що ми говоримо про плани розвитку. Where do you want to go? Куди ви хочете прийти? The high pro will primarily stay expert. The high pro is the high professional. Високий професіонал так буде експертом. The top professor who's only doing research and some teaching on his topic, but mostly not the best teacher because he doesn't understand people. Top professor буде робити дослідження і викладати свій предмет. And the managers, the leaders, who are trained on very different aspects. So, if you look at this, these two have something in common. So what we mostly do, and we look at the career, people start as an expert and then be they become the coach. Коли ми подивимося на кар'єру, люди починають як експерти і потім переходять у роль коуча. І тренера. So, especially in sports, you can see this perfectly well. They first become the trainer, coach. Особливо в спорті ми можемо це добре відсвідкувати. So we can draw the line like this. Можемо намалювати таку лінію. The first phase is being the expert. Перша фаза – це ти експерт. Then being the trainer and the coach. Потім тренер, коуч. And if you do this well, you can become a manager or a leader. І якщо ти це робиш добре, можеш стати менеджером або лідером. But this way of thinking is really old-fashioned. Але цей шлях до мене є дуже старомотним. This way of thinking is a mistake. Це помилка. We have to think different. Нам потрібно думати іншим чином. We have to think like this. And why? What is this all about? Which of the axes are this concerning this? This is all IQ related. This is all technical. How much knowledge of people do you need here? Nothing. How much social skills do you need? Nothing. But for this, 
This is about EQ and SQ. So, so, is the EQ and SQ. so this is the different way of thinking we now have in leadership. Normally, when we have a problem with a person, we give him a coach from the outside. And we ask a big advisory firm to make our strategy. But what then we actually do is we outsource the most important part because people are our main source. Our strategy is the main thing we have. Motivated people to do it is the most important aspect. When you, started, when you started talking about all of this, you all talked about motivation. Yes? That's here. So this you can outsource. This is the main aspect. What's happening? Okay, it's gone. Problems solve themselves sometimes. Yes, is this way of thinking clear? This is our basis. And then we got Corona. And the corona, of course, was terrible. But actually, it helped us. It helped us to make a breakthrough in the thinking about leadership. So the problem in the corona was we were not allowed to go to work, no? We had to stay at home. So what is the new office? The new office means that people see we do not have to go to the office all the time. The reality is we now even do this presentation by Zoom. Yeah. So why to drive one hour in the morning, one hour in the evening to go to the office just to answer some mails and sit behind your computer? You can do this at home. Yeah. So, of course, it has some requirements to your workplace at home. You have to facilitate people at their homes. So what we already see is close to the houses, there are a lot of central working places where people can go to to sit. A bit more quiet. And all the offices get smaller. So the office is more like a kind of a meeting place. It's about social contacts. It's where you go to, to talk to people. And it also helps us on some other aspects about climate. Much less traveling. It's cheaper, more ecological. Yeah. So the new office is more a place for social conferencing. But it gives us a problem in leadership. Before Corona, there was one golden rule in leadership. To measure is to know. So you want to... Sorry. You want to measure the performance of people. And we did it by measuring the presence. This is a time clock. Uh, 
When you get in 10 minutes late, people say, hey, did you oversleep? And we will look at, are you present? Whatever you do is not important. Yeah, if you just sit behind your computer, half sleeping, whatever. And now we are sitting at home. This is our workplace at home. So we still were in the concept if measuring is knowing. So we were asked by three big companies, technical companies, to help them in their leadership quest. How could they do it on a distance? The managers were lost. How can we control the people on a distance? And their answer was simple. We need activity monitoring on the computers. Very good, no? So, I like to play tennis. So one morning, I think it was a Tuesday, 10 o'clock, I went to the tennis court. Normally on Tuesday the courts are empty. At 10 o'clock because people have to work. Now all the courts were crowded. And next to the court we have these couches, banks, benches. On all the benches there was a computer. And they were locked in to the conference or to the work or to the whatever. And sometimes you saw a person, oh, I have to go to the computer and run to the computer because he had to answer something or whatever. One even had a coat with him, a special working coat, took on the coat before sitting behind the computer. So this is old fashioned. This doesn't work anymore. Yeah? So, do we not measure at all anymore? Yes, we do measure on output. But this is not always good enough. So what do we have to do as leaders, as managers? It's all about trust. And fortunately, we were already starting working with concepts closely related to it, like Scrum and Agility. Give people more autonomy. Let people work as groups. So in the big banks, in the offices, there are no managers anymore. I, two years ago I had a group of uh, Belarusian uh, bank managers in Holland and they were looking, where's the manager here in this office? <laughs> and, the, and the people said, we do not have a manager. And they couldn't believe it. They said, you must have an informal manager. They said, you must have an informal manager. But no, they decide by voting. So what is changing in the role of management? If the office is just a meeting place for sharing People will only be there two, maximum three days a week. Not sitting behind the computer. But in that moment, you have to coach them and inspire them. 
And you do this especially because people now want this. So you must make sure that people are internally motivated. I think that of each of your people, you know exactly who will be at home working and who will not. Who really has the right motivation on the SQ to really go for it. You don't have to check whether they are working. They do it because they are motivated. And you know for yourself also. You must have had these moments in your life that you really felt, yes, this is it. And then in the evening you did a lot of things extra. Yes? So working on IQ is no longer important. It's all about EQ and SQ. And this is why now, after 2020, we have a new reality. We are no longer the bridges, we are boosters. We only see them very rarely. But we have to inspire them, motivate them and trust them. This is how our life as a manager looks like. This is how now the offices look like. Nobody has a desk anymore. No personal pictures on desks or whatever. No. You just walk in and you try to find a place with the people you have to meet. Sometimes it's one to one, sometimes in a group, whatever. So, if we talk about the leader shift, I now went over it quite fast, but we did a lot of research with all the big companies and governmental institutes. And at least this is what all companies now say, this is our reality. This is how we transform our offices. So many rental contracts are cancelled. But now we have to train the leaders and the managers to have this role. Questions? Remarks? What do you think? <laughs> is this is this also something you feel in your country? Can I ask a question? First of all, uh, if we, I have a lot of questions. <laughs> Yeah. It's very interesting. I have a lot of people uh, in uh, like director, like directors who work like that uh, abroad, but uh, they different companies has different uh, coefficient coefficient of uh, performance. Uh, what um, exactly boosters? Uh, should uh, have any result. I mean, what coefficient um, should be like in first place, in second place? Well, it's all about KCBI. culture. KCBI. It's all about culture. And not only the culture of the managers, but also the culture of people. So, 
We did also some research at T-Mobile, the telephone company. Yes. And in a shop of T-Mobile, every day they are used, end of the day, what are our results? How many phones did we sell? How many subscriptions did we sell? Everything. And this is how we train the people. And what you reward, you will get back as a culture. So first, you will have to reward them on different aspects. And then, you can expect them to act different. But first, it comes from the leaders to change the culture, and then you can expect the people to change, not the other way around. Yep. But uh, if we uh, talk about SPU, mm -hmm. is a phase of uh, uh, is a phase to leader of the company probably some um, philosophy how boosters can uh, not include for simple employees. Um, the values of companies in mm -hmm. such uh, cooperation? Well, it still is the old way of thinking. I would advise everyone to read the book of John Perkins. John Perkins was the best-selling author in the United States for several years. And he said that we reached the maximum of our material level in all countries we will not get any richer. So, he was talking about transformation of material to happiness. John Parkins, and his name is Vier, and he said that all countries in the world have achieved people's material achievements, and now we need to material transform into happiness. So, look at the football players. Where do they point at when they score the goal. Do they point at their back? Or they kiss the emblem of the club? At this moment, we are working with the Czech football associations. Their biggest problem is that the younger players are no longer willing to play for the national teams. And why not? Because they're only thinking about their personal career. And they want to go to a big Western club and earn a lot of money, personal. But if we now look, we had a benefit game of the Ukrainian team. They didn't get any money. All the money from the people went to the army of Ukraine. And they were crying to be allowed to be there on the pitch. So we have to change our minds and realize that some things are more important than just the materialistic. But as long as we as leaders, managers, reward them purely on the material and on the results. We will be the Charlie Chaplin things and it will be like the old days. So we have to change the culture in total. Managers, leaders, companies, way of rewarding, everything. And, I, and of course, Maslow is still there. If people do not have enough money, yes, then the primary thing will be the money. And this is why we have to make it more even, otherwise it will never work. But we must find solutions for the problems nowadays. Not easy, no answers, but a lot of challenges. But it's interesting how uh, big companies include uh, such kind of uh, work, working booster. I mean, it's hard to tell about self-realization. I mean, uh, Maslow is interesting for me uh, wise, uh, when uh, pyramid is vice versa. I mean, the pyramid 
uh, is uh, start from the end. Well, you <coughs> can self-realize somewhere. You can uh, do something when you're depressed. It's not about uh, some hungry. When you're depressed, you don't want to do anything. Mm -hmm. That's why it's it interesting to me. Vice versa. But what? Uh, my question is: okay. How include boosters in uh, companies, for example, uh, that it's work good? I mean, some trainer, training, some uh, uh, coach from um, leasing, or uh, some some coach from outside. This is why I don't believe that a coach from the outside can really work. So what does the coach have to do? Make people realize what is really important for them. And very often it's not just the material thing. Why will they be happy? Will they be happy to get more money? Or will they be happy to have more satisfying work uh, for the head, uh, for for the cell the cell will be happy in if he uh, will have some money for example at a certain age you start realizing that that's not always true and now the younger people also the millennials especially in our countries already realize this i'm in the supervisory board of a very small bank and we easily compete against the big banks. We can find personnel quite easy. They cannot. They get more money in that big bank. But they choose the autonomy, the joy of work, because it's more fun. And they choose more fun over more material extras. But it is a difficult issue and there has to be some cultural change. And of course, in countries where the material is less there, then it, of course it's even more difficult. Mm -hmm. Well, unfortunately, it's four o'clock. We have to finish. <laughs> if people have more questions, my email address is here. You can always ask the questions. Thanks for staying awake, for being here, and hope to see you again. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry, I didn't think that you guys are finishing up. Can I ask a question? Is that okay? I don't know whether you can, but you can try. <laughs> okay, um, well, first of all, thank you for a um, very interesting um, lecture. Um, I have a question about the booster that you're mentioning that um, basically through the years in your chart, it seems like um, the last that the type of managers that they have evolved into are called boosters now. now I'm just thinking, is that um, optimal? Um, I mean, like for today's era, right? Because if you look at Elon Musk, he is actually um, also, you know, he's not about science anymore, and his engineers are actually not about engineering anymore. So what they have is actually a big problem because he's actually saying that they need people who are more into, you know, who are better, like, who are friendly, who have better social skills. They don't need to have those hard skills, you know, like they don't need the actual hard knowledge anymore. <coughs> so I'm just, yeah, I just wanted to hear your opinion. Do you think that this is a recipe for a disaster for the entire civilization? If everything is going to be just, you know, not entirely about science, not entirely about, you know, um, knowledge. It's going to be just about who likes who and, and that's it. And that's going to be the new world. Like, don't you think it's going to just like, just entirely all of us are going to just collapse because it won't be able to function. Just what's your take on that? Well, do you know anything about tennis? About who? Tennis. The sports. The sport, tennis. The sports, tennis, yes, of course. Do you know Roger Federer? No. No? Rafael Nadal? No. No? No. Well, then let's say in general, a top tennis player. A top tennis okay. player. How many coaches, how many managers does a top tennis player have? Should be a lot, I would think. 24. Mm -hmm. 24 coaches for one player. 
So what, okay. we, what we will have in the future, and this is what the booster will show, that we will divide the functions of coaching, training, leading people. We will have the high pros, the top experts, and they will do some training and they will be the experts. And we will have people who are very good in motivating people and stimulating people. And what we did not see, and I think this will be the next one, how many people have burnouts? How many people have stress at the moment? So the well, I, I would think <laughs> due to the pandemic, too many. <laughs> well, not just due to the pandemic, because it was already before, but it didn't show that much. But the physical cue will also be much more of a theme, and we need other people to also do a lot of help on that part. So I think we will have a dividing of functions, of management functions, and in the future you will not have one manager, you will have four or five or six. That's what I think will happen, and I think that will be much better, so not disaster, it will be a blessing. So the world will only be better, I hope. Well, it's just that the question is, like, how come now um, a modern manager who's called a booster really doesn't need to have any knowledge or the idea, the entire idea of how the thing, of something should be functioning? So I'm just thinking, how is he going to make decisions based on as what? long he as long as deep knowledge, the deep knowledge, you know what I mean? So that is kind of a thing here. It's, uh, it's, it's a lifetime type of a manager, so is that even a good thing? Is Zelensky a like military the, expert? Sorry? Is Zelensky a military expert? Uh, <clears throat> I don't think I want to answer anything about that. Okay. <laughs> right so now. you will have military people bringing the expertism, but you need Zelensky to motivate the people and to lead the people. So we divide the jobs. Okay. We have to stop. If you have any questions, just send an email with all the questions and I will answer, right, I promise. Thank you. Thanks a lot.